guys, it's Kevin Antresian over at NAM 2020 to find out what kind of gear is awesome and what shit sucks. Here with my good friend, Glenn Fricker. Everybody, you know him. Um, he's been... Uh, what the fuck is that asshole doing on this show? <laughs> um, he's been a huge influence on my channel, obviously. Um, I remember watching one of my clients sent me um, your video about the cupping the mic thing. Yeah. It was the first one I saw. I'm like, wow, that guy is a genius. Because he's like informative, yet funny, and it block engages the audience. So I thought that was a really cool. It never ceases to amaze me how human beings can fuck up using even the most basic technology. I was just trying to get out my frustrations. That's all. There's no genius about it. Just call it dumb luck. <laughs> but done very well. Kevin and I used to play Elite Dangerous together just before my channel really took off. Actually, yes. we, we, used to, we used to do that, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I hadn't touched it for too long. Well, I'm gonna. I keep trying to get in the back end, sucking back into the game. I don't have time. I know. I know. But well, one day we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll slow it down. Yeah. Um, so I just want to see, like, what are your favorite things you've seen innovation-wise at this NAM? Um, first and foremost, I gotta say the new plugins from PSP Audio. Oh, you guys gotta uh, remember the guys that did the Vintage Warmer? Yeah, dude, I use that on every mix. Yeah. In my mix. Yeah. They've got this new multi effect rack thing. It's kind of like the Slate, you know, the virtual mix rack. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Software, but it's like kind of like the Slate virtual mix rack, except this allows you to swap out different compressor types without changing parameters. Yeah. Which okay. is really cool. And it's got this amazing auto level writing system for like vocals and bass and kind of shit like that. So it basically does your automation for you. Huh. Okay. And that really blew me away. Very cool. So if you're a guy like me who's doing content creation, you need to get shit out the door as fast as possible. This is going to speed up the whole process. Very cool. Oh, but you're okay. using the machine. Yes, but I'm not, from, I'm not changing the human performance. Right. Though. That's Absolutely. the key. Leave the human being in. We can automate the mix as much as we want. Just don't fucking replace it with the samples. <laughs> oh, don't Absolutely. replace the drummer with samples. Absolutely. Um, uh, that's cool. He's been pretty quiet for a while, I feel like, in yeah. terms of releasing it. But I've been using the, the Vintage Warmer 2 for like 10 years. Before. Yeah, I know. That's just, it's yeah. just a, it's a total yeah. digital classic, if we can call yeah. it that. It's so good. So it's cool. Uh, let's hear, of course, else? everybody's talking about the new Neural Box. Yeah, good, bad. Everyone says good things so far. Yeah. We'll see what happens when we get it into a studio. Yeah. Um, I've been talking to like Dave Freeman about that and stuff like that. And he's actually like on board with it. He said they're doing it right. You still have to buy the actual like digital software for it if you're going to. So it's kind of like they get a kickback every company that uses you know, it's on board with that. Right. So that's the right way to do that. You right. know, we'll talk about the camper thing in a bit, but yeah. uh, what else is up there? Uh, oh, Gordon, dial two. Dial two. It's, dial a snare, it's a snare drum. It's a cable uh, system with a snare drum. Uh, you can tune your top head, your bottom head, and your bottom head separately with this dial. And it does it you know, equal tuning across the lungs and whatnot. And to pop out a head, you just dial it up, pull it out, drop it on. Oh my god. Cool. That, is that sounds coolest, like almost like cheating. That's great. That is the coolest thing ever for a studio guy. Yeah, you know I gotta what I mean? get one. So, yeah, that's why I said I'm like, I need to put this on my show. This thing's fucking That's amazing. amazing. All this kind of stuff. So, all you gotta do is flip it like that, take the head off. And that's it. And the coolest thing about this is not only the fact you can replace a head really easy, but say you're in a show, you're like, you know what? I got a nice little ballad. I want a nice. That's amazing. What about Rev? They've been killing you with marketing, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah, they really killed it with marketing. And it's like, yeah, they gave away a bunch of t-shirts, so they gave away a bunch of pedals, so yeah. that was fun. Um, of course, the most important thing at the end this year was the SMG cock blocker noise game. Yes! I've still got a few of those left, so if you want to get your hands on one, don't take my word for it. Watch Ola, Fluff, Trey, and, and Henning Holly as well. Watch their videos and see what they have to say. Awesome, very cool. Uh, what else? Everybody's also talking about Universal Luna system. It really integrates their whole hardware platform very tightly with it. And you know, it just kind of takes that extra layer of fiddliness out of the, out of the process, which okay. I think is pretty cool. They still need loop back, uh, which RME does. And so if you do a lot of live streaming like I do, the Universal stuff, it's been a pain in the ass. I had to discuss with them yesterday, but they're like, oh, well, we have a workaround. I'm like, I don't have time to right. do workarounds. I need to get shit done. Fix this fucking. So is it a beta now or is it a release? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a version one. Okay. It's a version one. Well, right. hopefully, it. hopefully they'll get it fixed. I'd love to get away from Avid, but I don't know if that's. Universal, your shit's pretty tight, but there is room for improvement. <laughs> I really, really like your plugins and just the whole DSP integration. Yeah. And so, uh, speaking of DSP, um, RME's got a, a new Babyface Pro. Okay. And that's looking pretty cool as well. That comes with some nice, nice stuff on board. And uh, they've just kind of bumped up the converters and they're like crazy and everything on it. Well, it's pretty bad. Very cool. That's still going to be about $900 from two channel units, but it's wow, fucking okay. stellar. They've always made good stuff. 
Yeah. SSL has got a fucking dirt cheap interface too. I think it's like two, three hundred bucks for a two-channel. It's a little guy. Yeah. That's pretty wild. So you can now own an SSL component. That's pretty fucking. That's pretty cool. So you've been doing a lot of pro audio then, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Really getting in there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, um, you know, there's some guitar stuff I, I've seen and whatnot, but I mean, like, my heart's mostly in pro audio, you yeah. know what I mean? So that's, that's what I do. Your yeah. studio You've been too. doing it how long? You've been doing it longer than me. I've been doing it for like 15 years. I started in 98. Okay. Yeah, so. So, similar though, similar. But um, like I said, I love doing the guitar stuff, don't get me wrong, but my heart really is the pro audio yeah. Drummer's got a really cool dual channel, Mike Green dual compressor for 1500 bucks. Okay. All analog. Is there a game included? Is there a game included? I don't know. One of their famous gates? I'm going to get to check it out soon. We'll, we'll, we'll see what's up. Awesome. Um, okay, dream setup. What console is it? You get one console. You know, 32 channel, whatever, 64 channel. Probably an SSL. Okay. I would go with API, but SSL is great because you get a lot of Well, that's like, that's the sound, yeah, the SSL is like, that's the sound of all the records I really yes. love to run up on. True. I mean, like, you know, that would probably be probably yeah. my dream set. Yeah, works for CLA, yeah. so right. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> awesome, cool. Um, last thing, a uh, bit of business here. So, we're doing a bit of a thing here, talking to ant manufacturers about the Kemper Profiler and how it actually affects their business directly. Uh, because it does, you know, like a lot of people, especially, I'm not going to say certain people's names because they want them to remain nameless, but um, they put out a brand new amp, a lot of people bought it, and they had a 70% return rate because people were profiling them and then just returning them. Oh shit. Yes. That's not cool. Yeah, and actually uh, certain people have put something on their input uh, signal uh, on the chain that detects the frequency sweep and then blocks it and shuts down the amp. Wow, smart. That is very smart. Uh, so uh, it's a little bit of like piracy protection in a way. And yeah. I was wondering how you feel about that, about like somebody spends their whole life R&D, slaving away on an amp, uh, Scott Splon, somebody, whoever, you know, and they make this product and then another company comes up with a box that just clones it, no licensing fees, no royalty, anything, and then just sells that. Well, that. well, I think if the person does, has that big an issue with it, I think they should call their attorneys and sue that company. Right, get some I mean, legislation. I mean, like, that, that, that's, the, that's the thing. I mean, like, if, uh, if, if you think you've been ripped off and you think you've got a legal case for it, then they, they, they should pursue that. A lot of these, uh, you'll see in the video, a lot of these guys, these big companies are coming forth and talking about it. Some of them are still a little nervous too because they think it's going to affect the sales. And they don't okay. wanna, like those people aren't buying your fucking amp anyway. They're right. stealing it, so who cares? Yeah, exactly. But you know, they're, they're still timid, so. But it's a little it's, bit it's more. It's like the whole DAW software piracy too. It's yeah. like, you know, people are going to steal it regardless. I mean, like, but I will say this, I remember, you know, um, Steven Slate when he put out the you know, FGX that yeah. got pirated and oh, yeah. just everywhere he didn't make any money on. So when he but the thing was when he locked down a system with high lock, yeah. you know, that's when he started getting money. Yeah. And, and he started How can we lock. do that with amps? Exactly. <laughs> so that might have to happen. Yeah. You know? Um and that's the thing. I mean like, the thing was the slate plugins were so good they were worth it. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. Same with the wave stuff, same with a whole bunch of other things. So one you know, it's like I understand it's software protection really sucks. And it makes the end user have to jump through some hoops and that right. kind of blows, but yeah. I do understand why it's necessary because right. people do need to make a living. Right. So yeah. if you're an amp manufacturer and you're getting your stuff ripped off, uh, maybe you should probably talk to Kemper about that and say, okay, this needs to stop. Right. What can we do? Yeah, exactly. Some kickback or something. Exactly. I don't know. And, then, and if they refuse to do it, then you go to like litigation and deal with it that way. Sounds fair. I mean, like that, that thing, I mean, like, this, I, I'm only one person, ultimately the lawyers of the courts are going to have to yeah. decide that one. Right, I don't have a dog in the fight either, I I'm just like, I think it just needs to be brought to people's attention because the consumer doesn't give a fuck. No, like, like, just like the music industry, they don't care, whatever's good for them, pirate music, pirate this, pirate that, and then the ramifications come way later. And sure. What the hell, we can't make money on music deal? It's like, yeah, obviously. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Lars was right. <laughs> First time for everything. <laughs>